Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for March 28th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. We're getting really close to 5,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy this content and aren't subscribed, go ahead and click the button. Kim and I started out the day at the Braddock Bay East Spit and were joined by our friend Cliff. One of the highlights of the morning was when these two birds flew in and landed. So if we look at this one, we see that it's yellow on the front with a black area in the bib. And if we look at the other bird, we see it's very camouflaged, brown and patterny on the sides and back. These are two eastern meadowlarks. Up in the tree, we had a bird that's white underneath and blue on top with very long wingtips to stick out past the tail. This is a tree swallow. Here's a medium sized gall with a medium gray colored back. We see yellow legs and we see a yellow bill with a black ring. This is an adult ring billed gall. Here we have a small female duck and I'll just go ahead and tell you it's a green winged teal. But the thing that was interesting is we could see the speculum here on the wing. So when the wing tucks, sometimes it shows this little area and from certain angles it looked blue. But when the bird turned and gave us a different angle, it turned green. So we thought that was really cool. We had 44 species from the East Spit. We all went over to Braddock Bay Park to start the hawk watch at 9 a.m. and the day started out essentially overcast and slowly the clouds started to break up and within a few hours it was completely blue sky in front of us. And the interesting thing was really that it was blue sky in front of us for most of the day but behind us there were actually a decent number of clouds. The winds started out light from the west and then strengthened and shifted to northwest and they felt pretty chilly. That northwest wind is directly in our face so after a while it gets a little bit annoying. Here we have a small raptor going away from us. We see very pointed wings so we should be thinking falcon and we see that it's overall light underneath. This is an American kestrel. Here we have a large black and white raptor with very angular wings. This is an osprey. This bird caused some excitement when it was spotted because usually when you see a songbird with a split or forked tail, it means it's some sort of mega rarity. But this turned out just to be an American tree sparrow that looks like it's missing some tail feathers. Here we have a raptor with a long tail, long, somewhat pointed wings, and an owl-like facial disc. This is a northern harrier. Here's a large bird with a two-toned underside and a small red featherless head. This is a turkey vulture, and we had a really good flight of turkey vultures again today as we're in the peak migration time for that species. Here we see a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross. We see a really long tail with a rounded tip. We see a large head and long wings held out straight. This is a Cooper's hawk. Here's one that may be a little tougher, but let's work it out. So we see somewhat long pointed wings, and we see black wingtips, a lot of black here, and we also see some black on the trailing edge of the secondaries. Looks like the tail is relatively long and we even see a white rump patch here. And overall it looks like the body is light underneath. So all of those together make this an adult male northern harrier. Here we have a large dark raptor with a large head. So we should be thinking bald eagle. And we also see the a lot of white here in the wing pit area. That's a sign of a juvenile bald eagle. Here we have a hawk with somewhat broad wings and a medium length tail. We see dark patagial bars and we see a dark belly band. So we know this is a red tailed hawk and we also see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail. So we know it's an adult red tailed hawk. This bird gave us a really nice close look. Here we see a large dark raptor. We see a large head with a really large beak. Overall the Head is dark and so is the underside to the body and we see a lot of white here in the wing pit area and a little bit more to the underside of the wings. This is a juvenile bald eagle. Here we have an all dark bird that was soaring around but this is not a raptor, this is a corvid. And we see that the outer tail feathers are quite a bit shorter than the central one which gives the tail a bit of a diamond shape. You also see a large head with a very large bill. This is a common raven. Here's a really unique looking bird. This is another juvenile bald eagle, just like we've seen on some of the others. But this one looks quite different because it's really, really white. So there's a certain amount of variation in the plumages of bald eagles. And this one just happens to be on the really white end of the spectrum. So we see a lot more white than would be typical here on the underside of the body. And the tail as well is mostly white with just a thin black tip to it. And we know it's a juvenile because we see 
these pale inner primary feathers, and we have an even trailing edge to the wing because none of the feathers have been replaced. And for comparison, you can compare it to this juvenile bald eagle, which is the same age, but a much darker plumage. Here we have a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross with a long tail and long wings that have rounded wingtips. So we should be thinking excipiter. We see orange barring underneath, so that tells us it's either an adult sharp-shinned hawk or an adult cooper's hawk. Now we see that this bird has a large head, a somewhat rounded tail with a white tip, and we see white undertail feathers that are fluffed out. All of those combined with the overall lanky look make this an adult cooper's hawk and possibly one of the local ones. They usually fluff these feathers out when they're acting territorial. Here's a hawk that was up pretty high with a group of turkey vultures. We don't really see that flying cross shape like we would have on the occipiters. This is actually a butio, but for a butio, the wings are a little thin and the tail is a little bit long. So it's not really that big bulky shape we would expect for red-tailed hawks. And even in the poor quality photo, you can kind of make out the pale translucent crescents near the wingtips. This is a red-shouldered hawk. And this is pretty typical of what we saw most of the day. It was small groups of turkey vultures migrating through at medium altitude against a blue sky. And sometimes the flight line was directly overhead. Sometimes it was shifting more off to our left. Here we see a hawk that has very dark patagial bars and a belly band. So we should be thinking red-tailed hawk. And we see the dark trailing edge to the wing and the red tail, which show that it's an adult red-tailed hawk. Here we have a large dark raptor with a lot of white spread throughout the underwing and wing pit area as well as the underside of the body. This is an immature bald eagle. Here we have two gray and tan birds with long necks and heads with long bills. And we also see trailing legs. These are sandhill cranes. Here we have another example of an adult red-tailed hawk and we had a pretty good flight of red tails today with more than 40. Here we have another example of a turkey vulture. We see that it holds its wings up into a shallow V called a dihedral. We see that it has a two-toned appearance to the underside, a relatively long tail and small head. Here we have a group of three sandhill cranes that passed by a little bit later. So today we had one sandhill crane, then we had two, then we had three, then we had another one. So total of probably at least seven. It's hard to tell sometimes because the flocks go by, then they come back, and it's hard to know if... The group of three was the group of two that picked up the other one. So anyway, I reported seven for the day, but they were flying all directions. Here we have another example of an adult red-tailed hawk. This one's nicely marked. Notice the dark patagial bars and dark belly band. And this is a typical example of the eastern subspecies or borealis subspecies, which is the most common subspecies that we see. We do occasionally also see the northern or abieticola subspecies, which is even more heavily marked. And here's one more look at a sandhill crane, and on this one you can even see the red cap on the head. And Kim and I went back out to Braddock Bay Park at dusk to see if there were any birds around. Sometimes as you get into April, you can start to see American bitterns taking off out of the marsh at night. That's something that we saw a bunch of times last year. We didn't see any tonight. We also didn't see any owls flying around, but we did have some American woodcocks displaying. So it was nice to hear them and see them doing their display flights. This video was taken using a thermal monocular when it was too dark to see them with the naked eye. Taking a look at the eBird report for the Hawk Watch, today we had 50 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 719 turkey vultures, 1 osprey, 12 bald eagles, 12 northern harriers. For occipiters, we had 4 cooper's hawks. For butios, we had 3 red-shouldered hawks and 41 red-tailed hawks. And we had 2 American kestrels for a total of 794 migrating raptors. That brings the March total to 7,100 and the season total to 7,258. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it'll be a mix of sun and clouds with a high in the mid 40s, winds west northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So those winds are going to be fairly strong, especially in the afternoon. Um, probably too strong to be up on the platform. So I'll either be counting from behind the platform or from the car, depending on how cold I am. Um, if the skies are more on the blue end, it could be difficult to spot the raptors as they get up high. 
Um, the wind direction is really about the same as it was today. So as long as it doesn't get overly strong, I would imagine there would be turkey vultures migrating and probably other things as well. But I think they'll be pretty difficult to spot with the blue skies and the strong winds. For Saturday, it's looking partly cloudy and then overcast with a high in the mid 40s. Winds north northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So a more unfavorable direction, but fairly light. So I would expect a bit of migration, but not a ton. And for Sunday, looking cloudy early and then partly cloudy with a high in the mid 40s and winds west northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So, again, fairly strong west northwest winds. Would imagine there will be some vultures moving and maybe other raptors mixed in as well. But with those strong winds coming at our face, it'll be a bit uncomfortable to be out. All right. Well, nothing too unusual today, but another enjoyable day of birding in the Rochester area. I hope you can join us soon out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.